Okay, so I am going to discuss the four financial statements. Okay. First, we have the statement of financial position. The statement of financial position reports a company's financial position at a point in time. The company's resources, the assets namely, what the company owns, and also the resources of asset financing. Okay. And the statement of financial position, there are two ways a company can finance its assets. First is through owner financing. Owner financing means that the company can raise money from the shareholders. Another way is through non-owner financing. So it means that it can also raise money from banks or other creditors and suppliers. This means that both owners and non-owners hold claims on company assets. So owner claims on assets are referred to as equity and non-owner claims are referred to as liabilities or debt. Since all financing must be, invent must be invested in something, we obtain the following basic relation. That is, investing is equal to financing. And this equality is called the accounting equation, which follows assets is equal to liabilities plus owner's equity. Okay, now take a look at this uh, example of statement of financial position of XYZ Incorporated. Okay, so this portion, okay, th th this means that uh, the statement of financial position report amounts at a point in time. So that's why it says September 30, 2020. Okay. So assets here, these assets, these are investing. So investing activities. So statement of financial position is organized like the accounting equation. Investing activities are represented by the company's assets. These assets are financed by a combination of non-owner financing liabilities, okay, non-owner financing liabilities, and owner financing equity. Okay. So the total assets, so cash and non-cash assets, you call them the resources of the company. Okay. So for the financing activities, assets must be paid for and funding is provided by a combination of owner and non-owner financing. Owner or equity, okay, this one, owner or equity, financing includes resources contributed to the company by its owners along with any profit retained by the company. Non-owner, Okay, this one, the total liabilities, non-owner, or you call them creditor or debt financing is borrowed money. We distinguish between these two financing sources for a reason. Borrowed money entails a legal obligation to repay amounts owned. So here, the total liability of 10.815 million pesos entails a legal obligation to repay amounts on and failure to do so can result in severe consequences for the borrower. Equity financing, this one, owner's equity, entails no such obligation for repayment. Okay, so this one, these are the non-owner claim on resources, the liabilities and owner claim on resources, the owner's equity. Now let's move on to the statement of comprehensive income. It reports on a company's performance over a period of time 
and lists amounts for revenues, also called sales, expense, expenses, and other comprehensive income. Okay, so this is an example of a statement of comprehensive income. Okay, so it reports amounts over a period of time. So this one for the year ended September 30, 2020. Okay, the revenues, these are the goods or services. So the expenses, these are the costs incurred to generate revenues. Now, manufacturing and merchandising companies typically include an additional expense account called cost of goods sold or cost of sales. We have here cost of goods sold. This is for manufacturing and merchandising companies. So in the statement of comprehensive income following the revenues, it is also common to report a subtotal called gross profit here or gross margin, which is revenues less cost of goods sold. Okay, so the company's remaining expenses are then reported below the gross profit. Okay, so this is the layout. Revenues minus cost of goods sold equals gross profit minus expenses equals net income or loss. Okay, so the operating activities use company resources to produce, promote, and sell its products and services. And these activities extend from input markets involving suppliers of materials and labor to a company's output markets involving customers of products and services. Okay. So the cost of goods sold, these are the cost of materials, labor, and overhead. The gross profit, that is the revenue, less cost of goods sold. Expenses, the expenses other than product cost of sales. Next, we have the statement of stockholders' equity. It reports on changes in key types of equity over a period of time. So for each type of equity, the statement reports the beginning balance, a summary of the activity in the account during the year, and the ending balance. So this is an example of a statement of stockholders' equity. Okay. All right. Okay. An example of the stockholders' equity. Okay, this one. So this contributed capital, this one, contributed capital, represents the cash that the company received from the sale of stock to stockholders, also called the shareholders. Less any funds expended for the repurchase. Retained earnings, this one, the retained earnings, also called earned capital or reinvested capital, represent the cumulative total amount of income that the company has earned and that has been retained in the business and not distributed to shareholders in the form of dividends. So the change in retained earnings links consecutive statement of financial position via the income statement. Ending retained earnings is equal to the beginning retained earnings plus the net income minus the dividends. So the statement of cash flows reports the change either an increase or decrease in a company's cash balance over a period of time. The statement reports on cash inflows and outflows from operating, investing, and financing activities over a period of time. So this is an example of statement of cash flows. So for the year ended September 30, 2020. 
So as I have said, there are three types of activities in a company. We have operating, investing, and financing activities. So in the cash flows, we can see here operating cash flows, investing cash flows, financing cash flows. And the result of that is a net change in cash. Okay. So to be able to know the balance at the end of the year, fiscal year, so you add the beginning balance, so that is cash balance on September 30, 2019, that is 6.392 million pesos. You add that to the net change in cash, that would lead to the cash balance on September 30, 2020, amounting to 9.352 million pesos. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Those are the four financial statements. All right. Okay.